This is the Luxman Stereo Power Amplifier M120A. Aside from this switch being broken, I don't know what's wrong with it. The only indication we have so far is this red marking here. It could be that the signal distorts when you turn the input level knob beyond this red marking, but I don't know, we'll see. Okay, let's start by powering it up and see what happens. Hmm, the power indicator is flashing. I Oh, it turned on. Okay. So I guess that is as it should. Okay, let's connect some speakers. Now, before connecting speakers to a broken power amplifier, it's a good idea to check for DC on the output. If there's something wrong with the power amplifier circuit, you could get a DC voltage on the output, which could damage your speakers. Some slight fluctuations. Let's check the other output. Yeah, it should be safe to connect the speakers. Alright, let's put on some music. So apparently the power level indicator has two modes. It can be used in full mode to indicate the power level matching the values below, or you can use it in multiplied by 1 divided by 100 mode. And then you divide all these numbers with 100. So let's say you would max out this power level meter in this mode. You will not output 120 watts, you will output 1.2 watts. So that could be useful for low power applications. For a consumer product this is quite a high power amplifier. It can deliver 120 watt per channel, or if you use it in bridge mode, or duo alpha as they call it for some reason, it can deliver up to 300 watts, which is a lot for a consumer product. And yet we can turn these input level knobs all the way up without completely destroying these small speakers. Now why is that? That is because I connected a CD player directly to the amplifier, and a consumer grade CD player usually have an output level of around minus 10 dBV which is about 0.3 volts RMS. Now the maximum input of this amplifier is 0.9 volts, so about three times more than the consumer standard. So it's probably designed to be used with certain Luxman pre-amplifiers. Anyway, three times higher voltage give nine times higher power. So I'm guessing the problems won't appear until we use it at a higher power level. So if we feed this with the correct signal level, we should be able to test it with higher power. To generate a 900 mV signal, we'll use this signal generator. So let's set it to 1 kHz. And sign. And let's adjust the amplitude. Let's do it with the second channel. That's probably close enough. Let's connect it to the amplifier. Now these speakers can't handle 120 watts and to avoid having a very loud sine wave here in the room we're going to use a dummy load instead. So we will turn up the power and we will measure the signal simultaneously and we will see when it starts to distort. If it starts to distort. So we start with the right channel where we think it will start to distort and then we'll take a look at the left channel and maybe we'll get an idea of how it's supposed to look. Okay, let's go. Looks good so far. Hmm, it looked good. 
Okay, let's take a look at the left channel. It looks good. Okay, so when I turn on the power indicator, we can see that it maxes out at 75 watts. Let's see if the same happens with the left channel. You can see this goes to 120 watts. These indicators are made for the 8 ohm case. And now we have 4 ohms connected to each channel. If we were to have 8 ohms instead, it would probably show the correct result on the left channel at least. So let's connect these 4 ohm loads in series. So we get 8 ohms and we have to test each channel separately. So now we have 8.8 .8 ohms, which should be close enough. So let's start by connecting the left channel and see if we get a more accurate result now. So according to the measurement, this load is now 8.8 .8 ohms, which means that in order to dissipate 120 watts across this load, we should have a voltage of about 32.5 volts. There we go. We're even a little bit over. So the left channel is definitely working as it should. Let's do the same test with the right channel. We easily achieve 120 watts, but the indicator still shows 30 watts. So the problem is definitely with the indicator and not with the actual amplifier. All right, let's take a look inside. Pretty hefty transformer here. And some serious filtering on the voltage rails. Here we have two 15,000 microfarad capacitors. And on each rail we also have two 4,700 microfarad row capacitors. And we also have a film capacitor and a bleed resistor to discharge them when it's not in use. Now here we have something I haven't seen before. Let's take a closer look. So here we have the power transistor for the amplifier. These are the ones that's doing the heavy lifting. And to cool them we have this copper rod that transfers the heat from the power transistors to this heat sink. Another very nice feature is that we have a whole bunch of fuses here. We have eight fuses just right here. So this in combination with the overload protection circuit should make this really hard to damage. And here we have the level indicators. So it could be that it just needs an adjustment. Here we have the power indicator level adjustment procedure. So let's follow these steps and see if that does it. Don't connect any load to the speaker terminal. Okay. Set up the power indicator switch to 100th position. Done. Adjust the input level to get 3 volt at output level. There we go. Okay, let's get the calibration kit. Now the reason you use special tool for these occasions is that you don't want anything in metal because that could mess up the calibration. Adjust the VR302 on the PD5115-3 to light up the 120 watt LED indicator. Okay, so the PD5115-3 is this PCB here and the VR302 is it's this one here. So we'll turn the potentiometer until the last LED lights up. There we go. Set the power indicator switch to full position. Adjust the input level to get 30 volt at output. Adjust the VR301B on the PD1153 to light up the 120 watt LED indicator. There we go. Repeat the step 1 to 6, 2 to 3 times.
There we go. Okay, while we're at it, let's calibrate the left channel as well. There we go. So the next part, step 8 to 13, is a bit more tricky to understand. But I think you're supposed to have the exact same signal for the left channel and right channel to be able to do this. So we'll start by setting up this exact same signal for the left channel and right channel from the generator. So I will be using this attenuator to make it easier to control the amplitude. Maybe 30 dB is good. And we will max out the input level control. Now we should be able to adjust the signal with only the function generator. There we go. Great. Okay, let's continue the calibration. Set up the power indicator switch to 100th position. Adjust the input level to light up the 1.25 LED indicator of right channel. Adjust the VR402 on the PD5115-4 to light up the 0.25 watt LED indicator of left channel. Adjust the input level to get 3 volts at the output. Adjust the VR401 on the PD5115-4 to light up the 120 watt LED indicator of left channel. Repeat the step 8 to 12, 2 to 3 times. There we go, let's test it out. Okay, now we have it hooked up once again, let's see if we get a more accurate reading this time. So 32.5 volts should indicate 120 watts delivered to the load. So it's certainly a lot more accurate this time. Now we can't expect 100% accuracy as this load is not exactly 8 ohms as this level indicator requires. But I would say that with this test setup it's probably as accurate as it's supposed to be. Now I must say I'm pretty impressed with this thing delivering 120 watts to this load without any problem. That's pretty impressive for a consumer amplifier. It's nice to see equipment that delivers the power it's supposed to.